CFOs and CEOs starting in 2024 will now have the option to buy Bitcoin instead of buying treasury bonds. So now you can buy a commodity that's liquid and fungible on your balance sheet. And, and that commodity is a scarcity. And because it's a scarcity, that means you can expect it to accrete in value more than 7%, probably 14% a year over the long term, even after. I think after we've gotten through the bull run and after the early adoption boost, which will cause Bitcoin to appreciate at rates faster than 14%. The first domino of the bull run has fallen. American companies will soon be able to count their Bitcoin reserves at their fair value. MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor revealed the catalysts for the next Bitcoin bull run. Over the past few months, much attention has been given to the potential approval of a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Many investors and analysts believe such approval will be a catalyst for broader adoption of Bitcoin. On September 6th, the Financial Accounting Standards Board announced its intention to introduce new fair value accounting rules explicitly tailored for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. All companies, both public and private, will have to adopt these rules for fiscal years starting after December 15, 2024. This implies a 2025 adoption for companies that follow the calendar year. Early in this month, Saylor said in his tweet, fair value accounting is coming to Bitcoin. This upgrade to FASB accounting rules eliminates a major impediment to corporate adoption of Bitcoin as a treasury asset. MicroStrategy owns 152,800 Bitcoins as of August 1, 2023. The total purchase price for the Bitcoins was $4.53 billion, making an average price of around $29,672 per Bitcoin. A report indicates that big tech giant Apple was working on a stock trading app for its devices along with banking institution Goldman Sachs. Across social media platforms, rumors began surfacing about a possible listing of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies should the platform ever come to light. During the interview, Saylor mentioned that from 2020 to 2023, it became increasingly clear to the accounting establishment that many mainstream companies wanted to acquire and hold Bitcoin. Now, let's direct our attention towards a few clips from the interview. Between the years 2020 and 2023, uh, it became increasingly clear to the accounting establishment that there are a lot of mainstream companies that wanted to acquire and hold Bitcoin. So MicroStrategy was uh, the first really big uh, public acquirer of Bitcoin, but, but uh, Block acquired Bitcoin and then all the Bitcoin miners acquired Bitcoin and then Tesla acquired Bitcoin and this became a public issue. It was taken up uh, with a lot of community support by FASB. After a very thoughtful process, they came to the conclusion unanimously that they should give Bitcoin fair value accounting treatment rather than indefinite and tangible accounting treatment. Uh, the latest, uh, the latest uh, communication on that indicated that they'll make this mandatory for all public uh, reporting companies uh, as of December 15th of next year. So as we go into fiscal years that end after December 15th of 2024, this will be common practice. And between the beginning of 2024 and the end, it'll, it'll be optional, I think, for companies to decide whether they wish to adopt it. And the significance of fair value accounting is that you account for Bitcoin similar to the way you would account for a, a portfolio of securities on your balance sheet. It kind of works like this. If, um, if I buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin and it trades down 50%, then in that period, at the end of the period, you'll value it at what, a, at, in this case, it would be valued at 500 million. You'd be holding 500 million on your balance sheet and you would have a $500 million investment loss. But you would report the investment loss separately from the operating gain or operating loss of the core business. So now you would see uh, there's an investment with an investment loss and the fair value at the end of the reporting period is this much, 500 million. Now, if you go a year further and you regain that loss and you double it, you would now be showing 
$1.5 billion worth of investment gains. And you would have $2 billion on your balance sheet. And the operating losses or gains of the core business would, would, would continue, uh, you know, unobstructed or, or unmodified. So now you have two parts of the business. You have the balance sheet part of the business where you have investment losses and investment gains. And you have the P&L or the operating side of the business where you have investment or where you have operating losses and operating gains. Um, this is uh, really critical because if you have a healthy business, let's say Facebook or Apple, and you have a lot of cash flow, you're never going to want to present the business as though it had no cash flow or, or it had no operating profit and it was losing money by virtue of owning uh, a volatile treasury asset. So the volatility of Bitcoin combined with indefinite and intangible treatment makes the holding of it toxic to a conventional company. Uh, a conventional CEO, a conventional CFO would never want to hold anything more than a trace amount. This is one of the reasons why uh, many people considered it and didn't take it on their balance sheet and why other companies that hold it uh, don't want to hold more than a small amount of 5% or 1% or 2 or 3% of their balance sheet. For years, the valuation of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin has been a challenging aspect of financial reporting for companies. The volatile nature of these digital assets has made it difficult to accurately assess their fair market value. The new accounting method will increase volatility in the earnings of companies with large crypto holdings but allow them to record financial recoveries from increasing crypto prices. Companies can begin using fair value accounting for their crypto immediately if they wish to. FASB member Christine Botosin said, It's not very often that we can both take cost out of the system and improve the decision usefulness of information, and it makes it a really easy vote to do both of those. Now, let's direct our attention towards a few clips from the interview. The significance of fair value accounting coming to Bitcoin is it, uh, it makes the asset non-toxic for an operating company to hold or a company that uses gap accounting. It also um, makes it transparent, uh, the performance of Bitcoin-backed companies to be transparent. And so that's a, a positive feedback loop, right? When Bitcoin companies are performing well, it'll be obvious to Wall Street and they'll want to finance more of them, right? So that's a secondary benefit. And the third is um, because Bitcoin is a commodity, it's a financial commodity, um, it can be held on the balance sheet of an operating company where um, right now only treasury assets or, or, or sovereign debt type assets can be held on that balance sheet. Uh, as a as a treasury uh, strategy, so before before Bitcoin, there really wasn't any good fungible commodity that I might hold on the balance sheet. My choice was uh, securities or property, but I can't really hold property on my balance sheet if I'm a corporation because it's not liquid. I can't buy 247 million dollars worth of property a week and then liquidate $121 million in an hour, right? It's, it's, I, it takes me six months to buy a building and it takes me three years, months or a year to sell the building. So that doesn't really work so well as a treasury asset. And then uh, packages of securities are fungible and they're liquid, but securities are discriminated against by the regulators. And, and if an operating company holds more than 40% of its liquid assets and securities, it's deemed as an SEC 40 reporting company or a financial company. And once it gets, uh, it gets deemed or designated as an SEC 40 company, the operating executives lose the rights to do many things that operating companies need to do, like issue debt, take on leverage, issue options, uh, sell volatility, etc. And so that uh, that is really not it's not a possible regime for an operating company like Google or Apple to operate in. They have to they have to stay an operating company. They can't be an SEC 40 company. For years, the valuation of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin has been a challenging aspect of financial reporting for companies. 
The volatile nature of these digital assets has made it difficult to accurately assess their fair market value. As the Bitcoin market continues to grow and evolve, having a standardized accounting framework in place is essential to maintain trust and ensure the responsible integration of BTC into the global financial system. This wraps up our discussion for today. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this information valuable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to stay informed with the latest news and videos. Thanks for joining us.